thought that if I told other kids, they would laugh at me because I didn't have good mom and dad living together, and other kids did. I think Laura probably wishes that we would get back together again. I think the parents should pay the penance as much as the kids. I think they take the easy way out when they get divorced. <laughs> I knew that the reason they arrested him for was because he had taken us. And I was in my cell, and I could see them, but they couldn't see me. And they were just so frightened. They were so terribly frightened. The judge in South Carolina asked me who I wanted to live with, and I said my dad, but you see how much worth that was. I mean, I'm still here. First, I prayed they would get back together. I mean, I was going, please, please, you're ruining my life. We cried. Everyone cried. I don't think I ever cried in front of my children until that night. I, I felt like I had grown up in about a few days a lot. <laughs> a lot. Brian used to be my very best friend, mm -hmm. but but we kind of got divorced. You kind of got divorced? And yeah. she's my yuckiest friend. He's now. your yuckiest friend. So who used to be your good friend, you got divorced from, and now he's your yucky friend. Do you think that's what mommies and daddies think about each other sometimes? Yes! Oh, I was really angry at him. Also, I was sort of feeling sorry for myself because, you know, I thought I did it. But later I found out it wasn't me. One of the things that we're here to discuss today is we need to try to focus on what could be done for Bradley right now to make things go better. What can each of you do? The Honorable Richard Levine, Judge Presiding. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We have something uh, added this morning, as some of you see. Uh, a film company is making a documentary of our very excellent conciliation process. Uh, Majors and Majors is continued to February 10th. Number three, Cody and Cody. Oh, number 28 is Baker and Baker. Uh, that's to one, three. Number 25, Yamato. Uh, anyone here for... Uh, There's over a million divorces every year. We cannot hope to stop divorce. We can hope to make it better for the most vulnerable victims, the children. 
Legally, husbands and wives divorce each other. But it doesn't stop there. Families get divorced. Children get divorced. Chances are better than even that you will have to cope with a divorce. For adults, divorce is often filled with tears and anger, hostility. But the effect on the parents is very different from the impact on their children. For them, it often seems like their world is coming to an end. It's the parents who aren't getting along, yet it's the children who, against their wishes and without their control, are also getting divorced. Up to 50% of our children spend some time living with just one parent. 50%. How these kids handle divorce will affect their today and all of their tomorrows. In the next hour, you will meet some of the children of divorce. Their ability to cope with very tough problems may inspire you. I think it'll surprise you. Chris, age nine, and seven-year-old Laura represent 90% of the children in divorced families. They live with their mother. They spend one night a week, every other weekend, every other holiday, and every other birthday with their father. This Mayfield Heights, Ohio family reorganized itself the way most do after a divorce. Mom got custody of the kids. We were married for three years before Christopher was born. One, two, three, let's go. And then two Come more on. years Don't and Laura was friends. born. We did it just like you're supposed to in the storybooks, you know. <laughs> a boy and a girl, two years apart, a house in the country, a picket fence, a dog, the whole bit. But things don't always work out. It's okay that my parents gotta do first. When you're finished, put your head down, and then I'll know you're ready to go on. I feel sad. Heads up. Read. We all I didn't read. know that we were gonna be able to see my dad, and I was scared because I wanted to see him. Dream. Did you dream last night? Dream. Now I know that you don't have to be scared because I get to see him now. And number 10. There. that if I told other kids, they would laugh at me because I didn't have a mom and a dad living together and other kids did. I used to feel real sad and everything. I used to go in my room and think about it and stuff. Seven. What does the seven stand for? Seventeen. Half the kids in my class, their parents are divorced. Chris? Okay, um, search. Wait. You can't okay. do that, so you go to the seven and make it six. When my parents got divorced, I thought it was my fault because my, me and my sister, maybe it was because we were being bad or something. Christopher is a very sensitive child, very sensitive. His schoolwork began failing, and he just took everything upon himself. Six minus four is two. All I'm going to ask you, just put your hands down for a moment. Laura, being the kind of child she is, kind of rolled with the punches. Get to see him every other weekend. 
and we get to see my mom most of the time. I thought everything was okay. I thought they were at ease with all that was happening. I thought they understood what was happening. But actually, they didn't. Grab told me that they still love us just as much as they did when they lived together. <laughs> but they couldn't get along as good together as they used to. Aggression is very, very common. They lash out, lash out at their friends, lash out at the people closest to them. Uh, there's, they're lashing out in pain. The anger remains. The anger doesn't go away. Okay, guys, what are we going to build here? Let's build a house like this. On there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, what do you need to start to build your house? The first thing you have to do is have a nice, dirty foundation. Divorce means that your mom and dad aren't going to live together anymore. Okay, and if you don't have a nice, strong bottom, what's going to happen? It's going to look cold. Yeah. What do you think about just sitting at home like this? Mm -hmm. you know, having our own little place like this? I mm -hmm. like it. Concentrate on this one. Concentrate on that one? Divorce means that your parents, they're not going to live together in the same house, but they'll still be good friends. Hi, Dad. Hi, honey. How you doing? Hi, Hi Dad. Bella. Over here. Hi, Laura. <coughs> How are you? Good. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine. You guys ready? Yeah, are we going to go right We're now? Mm -hmm. Come. Get you some ask, wait, come here a minute. I want to ask you something. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you think weekend? you would maybe want to change weekends? No! I want to go with my daddy's. No, 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 no. We'll talk about something else. They want to go see the new dresser, but Laura's soccer team's in the championship game. Yeah! Is it really? Did you win yeah. today? Yeah. No, but we're still going to be in the championship. They're in the championship, and the next day after that is a party. So I'm if you switch we weekends, play. then you can have them all Thanksgiving weekends. We're going to make me a heel out of it. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> well, just think about it, okay? It's something to think about. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Do you want to sit down? Am I invited to come over for the soccer tournament or no? Yeah, oh, yeah. You can go. See, Mr. Raven. Are you, you going to come to the teacher's conference? No, I hate I'm you. still waiting for the schedule, remember? Yeah, I'll be there. Oh, um, Mrs. Weir wanted to ask you if you wanted to come in and sit. They won't live together anymore, but I wouldn't want them to, because that wouldn't be good. Not if they couldn't get along together. This is the teacher's conference, and we date from quarter to eight to eight. I know, it's only 15 minutes. Let's get to bed, though, I Okay. Yes, sir, Daniel. Mm hmm? Are these? I don't know what I'll do without you guys. You guys want to take these for spares? No, they're wet. I have mine. Okay, why don't you step through? Bye. Bye. Have a nice time. Okay. Bye, Mom. Bye. I think if parents are not happy and have children, I myself personally think that they should be made to live together till the kids or the children are 18 years of age, or so forth. Sometimes I'm asked, what, what about living, uh, staying in a marriage for the sake of the children? And I feel very strongly that any relationship where you have to live a lie, where you are not honest to yourself or can't be honest to children, is extremely destructive to children. Okay, guys, ready for bed? Yeah. 
My dad told me, or Laura, one night, just because they had a divorce that didn't have anything to do with how much they loved us or not. Huh? That's your rubber and everything? It's not Grover. It's Groover. Mm -hmm. Okay, right on there. I love him just as much as I did when they lived together. We're gonna have pancakes in the morning. Okay. Okay. We love you. Okay. You guys go to sleep. Okay. No noise tonight. Okay. Good night. I'm gonna leave the door open just a little for you. I think children give up the dream that their parents will get back together in direct portion to the parents giving up that dream. It may take them a little bit longer, but if parents have a sense of going on to new things and new lives, productive lives, then children don't want to put it back together again. Night. Have a good day? Yeah. Good. Tomorrow's a busy day. Please go right to sleep. Okay. okay. I love you. Okay. Good night. Kiss. No baloney tonight. Okay. Brush your teeth? Yes. What you have left. Good night, Pumpkin. Love you. And I think my mom and dad will get back together. When Bobby was divorced three years ago, she was given custody of her two sons. Dad moved out of the family home in Winter Haven, Florida. He asked for shared custody of the boys, but the judge in the case denied his request. Bobby is now remarried and lives in Orlando, Florida, with Jeff, who is 12, seven-year-old Greg, and the boy's new stepfather, John. For Greg and Jeff, being in the middle of a divorce has been especially difficult. They were the victims of a crime called parental kidnapping. You see, two and a half years ago, they were kidnapped by their father. Bill is just one of over 100,000 parents who kidnap their children every year. He is currently under indictment in the state of Florida, and if he is convicted, he could serve up to five years in prison. I believe firmly in joint or shared custody, and I honestly believe, had we been given shared custody, as I had asked for, that I wouldn't have had to leave with the children. It has taken 
my birthright and the children's birthright away from us. I feel that when Bill took the kids, it was strictly for revenge. He had told me that if I wasn't going to live with him and I wasn't going to be his wife, that he would be sure that the rest of my life was miserable without him. I understand the frustration and the agony of a parent who, in some senses, gets shut down by the courts and shut out from their children and tries to, and has the impulse to kidnap a child. And I sympathize with that. But on the other hand, what it says to the children is that those impulses cannot be monitored in the parent or controlled, and that they're, you know, socially inappropriate impulses. And that's a very unsafe situation for a child. Jeff remembers the afternoon of June 5th, 1980, when his father picked him up after school. I knew he wasn't going to bring us back because we had talked about it because he drove by to school. He asked me if I wanted to go to South Carolina and if I did, was I going to miss my mom and things like that. I said I would a little bit, but I'd rather go to South Carolina with him. I, I knew that she was looking for us because I knew she wouldn't um, go without us that she would keep on looking for us until she found us. Greg, who was only five at the time, is still very confused about what happened. All I remember he said is that I told your mom we were going to go to the beach. I was really concerned about how Bill was treating the kids and what was happening with them. I knew what it was doing to me, but I, and I felt that if it was affecting me, that it had to be affecting them also. Bobby spent a year and a half and $36,000 searching for her boys. When private investigators finally located them in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, local police arrested Bill, but strangely left the boys at the house. When authorities returned to pick the boys up, no one was there. Several hours later, Jeff and Greg were found hidden in a locked car parked outside a convenience store. I was in the car. I was sitting there. I sort of thought that they knew where I was, so I was going to try to run to the border, which wasn't too far away. I think I could have made it, but for some reason, I just didn't. They came and uh, got me out of the car, and I was sitting there. That first night in jail, after they picked up the boys, and and put them in the children's shelter. When they picked them up and they walked them through the police station, and I was in my cell and I could see them, but they couldn't see me. And they were just so frightened. They were so terribly frightened. And that hurt. Local television crews greeted Bobby and her sons when they arrived back in Orlando. Momentarily forgotten was the frustrating year and a half when Bobby's boys were missing and the system let her down, when there was no county, state, or federal agency willing to search for the boys. It cost Bobby every cent she and John had to find her sons. If she hadn't taken matters into her own hands, she might never have seen Jeff and Greg again. Jeff and Greg said goodbye to their father in the courthouse in South Carolina a year and a half ago. They haven't seen him since. At one point, after we had been home for a while, Jeff turned around and in a very, you could tell, you could just feel the anger and see the anger. He said, Mommy, you knew where we were. If you wanted us, you could come and get us. Daddy said that you knew where we were and that you could get us whenever you wanted, that you didn't want us anymore, that you wanted John and not us. I'm not sure that they really understand they were kidnapped by their father. To them, it was more or less Daddy was taking them for a while. I don't know whether they realized that they would never see me again. It was weird. I don't know. I had all these things I hadn't seen in such a long time. and It was OK, but it's getting boring now. There ain't nothing going on. I want to go. I want to go back to South Carolina and stay there for a while. For a while, she was going to send us during the summer and just send us back because um, she knew that we really wanted to go back, but then she didn't. 
as well as missing their father and adjusting to being back in Florida with their mother, Jeff and Greg are still getting used to a new stepfather. The boys and I went through quite an adjustment period at first. We were all having problems getting to know each other. This is a, a small house, and I've got some tendencies for some discipline. Too much spanking, too much hollering, too much trying to make them live up to my standards. There's something wrong with me mentally. Is there something wrong with you mentally? No, there's not. What do you think? I don't have anything mental to be wrong with. I think that was a question. It's so hot and haven't let out cook cold yet. I think that uh, kids should be able to uh, say who they want to live with because it's not really fair giving them to one of the parents. Oh, you want this? I'm not, I'm not very hungry. The judge in South Carolina asked me who I wanted to live with, and I said my dad, but you see how much worth that was. I mean, I'm still here. I don't remember if Gregory said who we wanted to live with. at least once a week, and they have their down moments and they have their up moments. Mm -hmm. I think they're doing okay. I think they're leading more of a normal life than they were leading before we left. Uh, Bobby's remarried. It's more of a family life than it was. I don't think they're doing bad. God. Where's your little brother? Let me talk to him. You want to talk to Greg? Here you go. I think they both missed me during the time they were gone. Now it's the other way around. There's a lot of loss of their father, basically speaking. They feel miss, missing for him as much, I guess, as they did for me. There is one slight difference. They still have contact with their father. They do still talk to him on the phone, whereas when they were gone from me, they had no contact. Children always look happy, but they're not going to be happy until Bobby and I can work out some sort of a working relationship that the children can understand. If I had it to do over again, I would still go through with the divorce. But I think that I've learned a lot by going through it this time that maybe I could do it differently the next, you know, if I could do it over again. No, you're not. I'll get you first. <laughs> I'm never going to get married. So if I don't get married, I can fight like in boxing, and no one will care except my fans. I tell old kids.
kids just to hang on because after a while they'll get old enough where they'll have their own life to worry about and they won't have to worry about how it was with their parents. I'd say just wait and you'll see what will happen and that it will turn out pretty funny. shouldn't have kids because it's just rough on the kids. Until almost two years ago, this was home for a whole family. Then came the divorce. When their mother moved out, 16-year-old Stacy and 13-year-old Scott began living in two homes. When their parents decided to divorce, they also decided to share custody of their children. So, four days a week, Stacy and Scott live here with their father, and the other three days, they live with their mother in a nearby apartment. I chose joint custody for all of us because I didn't want my children to not have a father. And I wanted them to have a relationship with him, and it's turned out to be a far better one than I think it would have ever been if I had stayed married to him. Okay. So you need to jump right under it. I think I decided on joint custody, first of all, for myself. I didn't realize it at the time, but I've come to realize that that it was to become a complete parent. I did not want to be uh, a weekend father. My parents basically do have no reason to talk to each other. And the communication between them revolves around my brother and I. And the fact that they chose to have joint custody, we know there was no doubt in our minds that this is what we were going to do. It wasn't even, it wasn't even questioned. Stacy. Uh, see, Dana, I want you uh, to fix up the vegetables tonight. Okay, I'll be down in a second. I just have to finish reading this one page. All right. Good. I'll be down in about five minutes. Okay. At first, it didn't really suit me how I wanted my life to be, going back and forth. And I thought that it should be their life that should change, not mine. But then I realized that it's a compromise, that their life is changing and my life is changing. And I realize it's for the good of everybody. In joint custody, we have some studies that show that children do better because they have more contact with dad than they do ordinarily where mother has full custody of the children. And it is that continuity, that feeling that both parents continue to care and continue to be involved that is so important. The part? Stacey, but you haven't even really worked on your part yet. You haven't had that many practices with you. Scott, I've had... Every, for the last three weeks, we've done F3. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll read for you. Okay. Okay? All One right. thing that's very hard about living half a week with my dad and my brother is every morning when, when I get ready for school or to go out on the weekends, 
and I'm dressed, I'll always go in and say to them, well, how does this look? Does this top look good with these pants? Oh, you know, they'll, they'll sell Stace. You know, it looks great. Like it a lot. The colors match. And they don't know what they're, they really don't know what they're talking about. One of the very hard things for me to adjust to was not being able to see my mom for three days. And she always, she, when they first got separated, she called home to my dad's house all the time. Hi, Mom. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I got home so late last night. Yeah, it was so funny. Lisa and I, um, we went out for dinner. Each time I go to my mom's house, I get a duffel bag, and I pack my clothes for three days, and it's trouble, and I don't like it, bringing them back and forth, but it's worth it. Thursday night. So when you're in Arrowhead and Dad's at the tournament, then I will be here. I'll sleep, be sleeping here with Lisa. Yeah, I'm having dinner with you, and I'm having lunch with Dad. Isn't that right? That's what, that's what we decided. And Scott's going to be at soccer. I was afraid at first that my parents would forget to pick me up. Soccer practice, I was afraid they'd pick me up or at school. And then, they, then I told my mom and dad that I was afraid they'd be abandoned. And they told me that they were afraid too. And so we both sat down and talked about that we wouldn't abandon each other. And we both agreed on not doing that. <laughs> they try as much as they can to accommodate my sister and I. Hey, Scott. Did we win? We blew two goals. I mean, we let in two goals. We lost three to two. How how'd you do? I played defender the first, the second half. I told everybody I would score right when I got in there. First pass, I scored, and then I assisted. How about you, Craig? You know why we lost? Because you weren't there. I told you. You know, if you, if you want to pay my way there, I'll. <laughs> I'm your good luck chart. Yeah. Well, take a shower. I'll be back. <laughs> You need any sweaters? Sweaters? Sweaters. My green shirt, not really. Let me see what else. Um, I have my I have Sunday, I have clothes after a shower. I have clothes for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and for soccer. Soccer stuff. And let's see what else. At first, I thought it was really tedious to bring clothes, packing in my dad's, figuring out my whole week before the had even started. Three days ahead, four days ahead. Then I realized that my mom didn't really have enough money to afford clothes for my sister and I. That's it. That's it. Books. Books are already in my mom's. We're done. Because their parents live close to each other, Stacy and Scott have not had to change schools. We to overanalyze particular things. Sometimes, as Freud said, you know, your mother is just your mother and a cigar is just a cigar. So you have to um, <laughs> begin to talk about... Yeah, in a week now, divided between two homes, school is the one constancy in Stacy and Scott's schedule. The last four days, they've lived at their father's house. After school today, they'll go to their mother's apartment, where they are just beginning to feel at home. It's like one piece. I'll use one piece. I've got two pieces left. Then I'll get some, and I'll give you some. Thanks. Have a frog Life at my mom is different than at my dad's because my brother and I share a room there. And because of that, I don't feel like it's my sole room. But I have brought a lot of things that are mine, pictures, and I've, I've made a collage just of, you know, just different things that I like. But I put it there, trying to make it feel like mine. And, and slowly and slowly, it does feel more like it is. Got you a lot of homework? Yes, ma'am, so far. I have so much. And my mom's house, it's more like, like kind of visiting, because I'm not used to it so far. But yeah, it feels good. like they're still married. I mean, good. theoretically, oh, I know they're not, they never will be. And I really don't want them to, because it'd be too much fighting. But I just feel that I'm closer to them. And I feel that even though I'm my dad's, I feel my mom is still around. I mean, I just, it's like, it's like a, a ghost. And my dad's, I feel like a ghost to my mom. And my mom's, I feel a ghost to my dad. We're buying computers for it. When we look at children immediately after divorce, they seem to be doing quite well because the feeling of 
of finally getting all of this turmoil settled is so relieving that there's a feeling of, well, it's over, and now I can get on with my life. It's projected that over 50% of children born in the 70s will spend some time in a single parent family. <laughs> so far, joint custody is working. Stacy and Scott are living a new family structure. A million marriages will come to an end in our courts next year. If your marriage is one of them, how can you avoid putting your kid in the middle? Fighting over your children in court can become a thing of the past. Well, let's try to talk about some of these issues about Bradley and see how it goes. And maybe you two can be helped. Parents in nearly half the country can now use a process called mediation to help settle their custody and visitation disputes. Rather than having a judge decide what's best for their children, they are trying, with the help of a mediator, to work it out themselves. In addition, Six and a half year old Bradley lives with his mother and stepfather. He's comfortable with them and has been reluctant to leave them for the court required visits with his father and stepmother. His stepmother is trying to help Bradley and her new husband, but unresolved anger between Bradley's father and mother is making the every other weekend visits to his father's house difficult for everyone. There was always opportunity, but I didn't. Especially for Bradley. He is trying to be around him a lot when he was growing up and, and when he was smaller than he is now up until a year ago i know I've, i know i've turned around and walked away when he ran to his room and said he didn't want to go that's because i wasn't going to force him to go with me i don't know about the past you know i've only been with danny a little over two years i don't know what happened before but i know what's happened since i've been with him and i to myself don't think that she's wanted danny to be his father since i've been with him do you see things that way, too, Steve? Well, there's definitely a lack of communication. No doubt about that. Exactly how we resolve it, I don't know. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. I know that it's not easy to be sitting in the same room together to talk, but I'll tell you something. I'm really happy that all of you came here today. All of you have some role in Bradley's life. Uh, in mediation, what happens is the focus is on the children's needs. What are the, what is the, what are the needs of the children and then the parents uh, have to make their own decisions about meeting those needs. Is that something that you'd like to be in, to play in Little League? Well, that's wonderful. Do you have any friends who are in Little League? No? Are there some special things that we should tell the adults while we're all here together? Okay. You need a mitt? I don't think he knows what he needs yet. Bradley, did you hear what your dad just said? Well, he wondered if you needed a baseball mitt to play baseball with. Do you have one already? Oh. You don't have one? Well, then we need to get you one, huh? Mm -hmm. Mediation helps children by helping both parents to continue to be involved in the life uh, of their children. It gives them a chance to work out and to communicate. It gives them a chance to be in the same room together. Okay, I'm going to see you both now. And this father and mother don't want a judge to decide who their children are going to live with. Although they're angry at each other, they feel they're still the best people in the world to determine what's right for their kids. Their mediator needs to understand the children's feelings as well as the parents in order to help them come to a decision that they can all live with. Do you know why you're here today, Crystal? No. Did, did mom and dad talk to you about it at all? Well, yeah. Well, what did they tell you why you're coming today? Um, my dad told me that we're coming here today to settle things out. Sometimes my mom says, I want them. Mm. And sometimes my dad says, I want them, but they can't both have us. Because you see, my dad can't have us at the same time when our mom has them. Sometimes I think, why can't this be a dream, you know, a bad dream, uh -huh. instead of something that's happening in real life? 
Well, I, I, I wish they were back together, but... And, um... I wish they could get married again, too. You'd like them to get married again, too? Yeah, and come back together. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank Last you. year, families like this, who worked out their problems through mediation, saved the Los Angeles County taxpayers 1,500 court days and over a million dollars. But money is not the issue here. This family is on its way to communicating. You can see this beginning in the special moment our cameras captured as they walked out together. California is the only state uh, that has mandatory mediation. Uh, in a sense, we think that we're writing the textbook on how custody and visitation is going to be handled in the 21st century. Mediation is one tool that's helping divorcing parents and their children. There are others. Children need emotional support. At Kids in the Middle in St. Louis, Missouri, children of all ages help each other cope with divorce, sharing their feelings, learning they're not alone. For the very youngest, it can simply be figuring out what divorce means. Okay. Divorce, Andy, he, that means that your mom and dad are separated and they don't live together anymore. Well, now it's Shannon's turn to talk. What does divorce mean to you, Shannon? What do you think that means? When my mommy gets mad at my, my, at my daddy. When divorce means when your mommy gets mad at your daddy. And how does that make you feel? Mad. Mad. Put your arm around this person okay. and this person. Stand up, Katie. Wait a minute. We okay. have two more people like that. Stop. Come here, Colin. Colin, come here. <laughs> We're, okay, we've got that Colin in. Okay. Let's have a hug, a kid in the middle hug. Ready? One, two. No, no, we're not going to squeeze. Just like this. This is our hug. How does it feel to have a hug, a good hug? Most of the time when a youngster's parents divorce, they feel very alone in that divorce. And this is why the groups where children can talk with other children of divorced parents, where they can bear their soul, they're so surprised to find other youngsters feeling the same way they do. And it's very comforting to them. It was before she asked him for the divorce that he said, you know, hey, it's your kid's fault that we're having all these marriage problems. Um, I think it's because he, he doesn't know how to blame himself. It was real different before. I mean, I didn't have such a quick temper, but it's worse now. I mean, because I can just go in my room and I'll just sit there and be real mad and punch the walls or something, but I just, I get real violent now, and it's not too good, huh? Yeah. It sounds like you're just real angry. Uh, yeah. And I don't know how to get my anger out. I sit in my mom and my real dad didn't separate. Well, I hoped a whole lot that they would get back together again, but I don't know that they probably won't. I'm glad that they've got the divorce.
in the last hour, you've met the people who are confronting divorce. The psychologists who help families through the emotional crisis, the mediators offering an alternative to courtroom custody battles, the parents who at the most stressful time of their lives must also help their kids. And most importantly, the children who hope that they have made a difference for the next kid in the middle. Some children seem to handle divorce better than others. Is there a secret recipe for a, a successful divorce? Well, perhaps one ingredient is knowing what's available to you. People all over the country are finding new ways of helping families keep their children out of the middle. Now, most children feel very alone during a divorce, like they're the only ones in the whole wide world who could be feeling that way. Well, one thing that seems to help is being able to talk about it. There are groups led by psychologists where children can share their experiences with other kids in the very same situation. The group you saw in this program is in St. Louis. There might be one in your community. One growing trend finds divorcing couples continuing to share responsibility for raising their children. Today, 90% of the time, mothers get custody of their children, but things are changing. Joint custody is an alternative which seems to be working for some families. It doesn't work for everyone, but some experts see it as the way of the future. 27 states now have some form of joint custody. If you want to know more about the options available to you, contact the Joint Custody Association at area code 213-475-5352. 213-475-5352. Most people think that when they decide to get a divorce, they must go to court and let a judge determine what is best for their children. This isn't always true. Parents in 23 states can now use a mediation process to help settle their, their custody and their visitation disputes instead of letting the court decide for them. If you want to know about mediation services available where you live, call the federally funded Divorce Mediation Research Project at area code 303-832-1555. Area code 303-832-1555. Divorce only means the end of your marriage. It doesn't have to mean the end of your family. That is up to you.